Today at the shop, we're going to be making a Zen Bell out of an oxygen tank. So we're going to start out by um, cutting it in half with a plasma cutter and then we're going to build a, a hanging structure for it and then we're going to put a bell in there and, and that's it. This is a pretty thick wall so it resonates really well and it's, it's got like a deeper tone to it so it's a, it's a really cool nice sound. These things are really heavy and solidly made. This, it weighs about 100 pounds as is so I'm going to cut it to a reasonable size that someone could mount it on like a porch post or something. cut the bell to about 15 inches. So this wrap is a good way of getting a, a round object square. What you do is you just start wrapping it around there, put it right on your mark, and then you just start wrapping it around itself. Plasma cutter is essentially a uh, handheld lightsaber. An elegant weapon. And it's, uh, it's a lot quicker than a torch, a lot cleaner than a torch. Uh, it's really easy to use. I'm just gonna freehand this line. If I wanted to, I could make a little guide around there to get it perfect, but part of the beauty of these is that they're, they're kind of rough and, and cool, and you know, you can definitely tell that they're handmade. <laughs> That's gonna be our bell. All right. So the bell is gonna hang like this with the open end down. We always wanna watch out for anything that's gonna hold standing water. It'll attract mosquitoes. It's just something we wanna avoid. So I'm gonna try and find some sort of a, a hat essentially for this piece that'll draw the water outwards. And hopefully it'll be something that's more decorative and it'll also like just enhance the bell as a, not just a functional piece, but it'll be a, aesthetically pleasing piece as well. I could always just weld a plate on it and then cut a circle out, but I don't want to do that. Damn, how hard is it to find a rusty piece of metal that'll look like a hat? We couldn't really find anything outside to cap this with. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna take a piece of this quarter inch sheet steel and cut a circle out with our uh, circle cutting jig right here. This allows you to make a perfect circle uh, with the plasma so you, you don't have to freehand it because when you freehand something, it always, you know, you could always mess it up. So what it essentially does is it pivots on this little point right there. So you would take a punch, put a little, a little uh, hole in the steel, put the point in it, and this allows you to make a perfect circle going around that point. This tank sat outside the metal shop for years and years and when we first cut into it, it was probably halfway full of water and just grime and mud and rust. Um, so this is what that looks like. Uh, this all just fell out of it right here just from sitting on the table. Uh, I have a feeling that's going to interfere with our little bell that we're going to put inside. So we're going to have to um, probably try and get a lot of that off with a wire wheel or wire brush and whatever we can. So, but I'll save that for later. That sounds terrible. So I don't want to, yeah, I, that's why I'm saving it. That's why I'm saving it for later. So, our 
Bell has a hat. I envision this bell being mounted on someone's like six by six, four by four uh, front porch post or something similar to that. So I'm using this uh, 90 degree square right here so that I can build this bell in the orientation that it's gonna be when it's uh, finally installed and someone has bought it, which makes it easier. So. Now we gotta find the piece that uh, comes out and supports the bell. 3 8 material, look at that. Perfect. These are all just drops for, uh, from projects that we use, um, that, that we work on. These specifically are leg drops from legs that we uh, build for fire pit stands. It looks like we've already used it for something, so I'm gonna grind this weld out and then I'm gonna tack it to the, to the plate over there. I'm thinking I'm going to have it welded about halfway up this plate. But the goal is to make sure that this top part, so I'm going to drill a hole through here, so we want this to be level right here. Uh, so, there we go. Okay. Can you okay. just hold that there while I, clamp, while I tack weld it? Sure. Thank you, John. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, John. You're welcome. The next step is to find our decorative piece that is going to support the weight of that heavy bell. That thing probably weighs 60 pounds now. So it's just going to be something that comes up from the top and goes there. Um, we have a whole wall full of uh, decorative metal pieces to choose from. You can maybe... That looks expensive. <laughs> what do you say? We got this. That could, that could be good. We've used this for something, as you can see. We got some welds on there, but uh, we'll use it for, for our bell now. This has been painted before, so I'm just gonna grind off some of this paint so that I can get a good clean weld on it. So my plan is to weld this in the center right here, and then I'm gonna cut a hole in the end of this, the same diameter as this uh, three quarter inch pipe, so I can put this threaded piece in, that is and this other end is welded to the bell, and then I can put a cap on it, and that will finish it off and it'll hold it there. I'm gonna cut a little oversized hole because, just to make it easier for whoever's trying to put the bell onto the mounting fixture. So I got a little circle there. So I'm just gonna freehand cut that with the plasma. I know where my center is on this, uh, this circle because I put, made that punch mark right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just draw two lines through there, and then another one like this. So now, when I go to put my pipe here, I can see exactly what dead center will be. Still when metal cools, it, um, it contracts. So if I was just to do one tack on one side or do one bead on one side, what'll happen is it'll start pulling like let's say I did a, a tack over here, it would start pulling this whole pipe over to one side so it would not be plumb anymore. So if you do four points around there, then you can start welding around without it pulling to one side. Go. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. Well, there's some stuff in there, all right. 
Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of quarter inch pencil rod and I'm going to use that as what's going to su suspend my ball that's going to be inside of here. So I got to clean up the inside of this tank where I'm going to make my weld because uh, you need a good clean surface to, to weld on, get a good arc. So I'm going to grab a die grinder. <laughs> This is what's going to be welded to the bottom of that, the inside of that tank that I just ground out. The challenging part is welding this inside in that little hole with the pencil rod attached to it. My balls should be really sitting just below the bottom of the bell, which is about 13 inches. But I got to make a loop on my pencil rod, so I'm going to cut a, I'm going to cut it long at 20 inches uh, because I don't know exactly how much I'm gonna use for that, for that loop. Coming in hot. So all I gotta do now is close up this little side right there and then that'll, uh, that'll slip over this chain link nicely. I have to weld this chain link inside of this 15 inch hole with this uh, pencil rod attached to it. I got a little trick that I've come up with to, to do that. Um, what I do is I just super glue that chain right there to this loop. Put it in here and I'm going to put it in at a little bit of an angle so that it this rod doesn't get in the way of my, uh, my hand and the welding torch. So now that it's attached to the rod, I can just precisely, precisely put it exactly where I want to, stick my hand down in there and attack weld it. So what I'm doing is I'm drilling a hole through this ball so that I can, uh, if this is a little bit bigger than the pencil rod that the ball is going to be welded to, so I can just slip the ball onto the rod and I can uh, get the, the correct distance that I need inside the bell. So I'm just going to tack this guy, this chain, to the, what is going to be our, our ringer handle. So now the last step is to weld it back to the ball. I'm going to give it a pull test because I don't want it falling off on anyone. That feels really good. Time to hang her up. That is a bell. So I'm going to put this little tab up here. I'm just going to weld it to this bar. I want to have a, a good hole that we can put a screw in up top because the way this is situated is it wants to pull it out from the top. So I want to get a big screw up there. And I'll probably get two more here and maybe a couple more down here so that we got a good five or six screw holes that we can mount to, mount with. It looks good. It does its job. It rings. Not only is it a cool decorative piece, but it's, it's cool that we could got to use this oxygen tank that otherwise would have just gone, gotten thrown into our scrap metal bin. Upcycling 101.